So far I have been teaching you about Biosevert's law, the law which helps you calculate the magnetic field due to any current configuration. Today I'm going to teach you another law and which you call as Ampere's law. This is also useful to calculate the strength of the magnetic field due to a current configuration. At first you might wonder why do we need two laws? I mean isn't one enough? The answer is yes, one is enough. But sometimes Ampere's law is going to be useful uh, as in it's going to help us calculate the strength of the magnetic field without having to deal with complicated integrals. I'm going to give you examples later on and you will see what I mean. So let's begin with trying to understand what Ampere's law is. To do that, let's take an example. Imagine that there's a wire and that wire is going into the plane of this screen, okay? And so it carries a current and let's say it carries a current into the screen and let's call this current as I1. Suppose there is another such wire and this wire carries a current out of the screen. Let's call that current as I2 and assume there's another wire carrying a current out of the screen and I'll call that current as I3. Now if you have followed me so far then it is obvious that all the three currents are going to produce magnetic field around it. So for example if I choose a point P over here then this current is going to produce a magnetic field approximately in this direction. Uh, this current is going to produce, remember, you have to use right hand thumb rule and the magnetic field is in circles. So maybe this would be B2 and B3 would be this way and the magnetic field created by I1 would be somewhat this way. This would be B1 and so on and so forth, right? So there's some net direction of the magnetic field. Let's not worry too much about the direction. So at every single point, there is some magnetic field. It's very complicated. Now what Ampere says is take a loop, a circular loop, and that loop can have any shape and you can choose that loop anywhere you want. I'm going to choose that loop over here. I'm going to call this loop as loop 1. All right, the next step is to travel along that loop. Either you travel in the clockwise direction or in the anti-clockwise direction. I will travel in the anti-clockwise. And as you travel along the loop, at every single point, in, point over here, you're supposed to calculate the product of, or the dot product of the magnetic field B at that point and the DL vector. The DL vector represents the small displacement. So for example, if you consider at this point, let's say the total magnetic field at this point is in this direction. That is magnetic field. And since we are traveling in the anti-clockwise direction, at this point, the DL vector is going to be this way. So what we need to do is calculate the strength of the magnetic field along the DL vector, and then multiply the magnetic field with the DL vector. So that turns out to be B dot DL. Okay? And we have to do this over the entire loop. So we have to do this over the entire loop and add it all up, which means we are going to do an integral. Now this sounds very tedious, very tedious indeed, because we have to calculate the strength of the magnetic field everywhere and then do a dot product and then do an integral very tedious work. However, Ampere says that this answer should always be equal to mu zero multiplied by I enclosed. So the only thing to understand now is what is the meaning of I enclosed. To understand enclosed current, what I want you to imagine is Take this particular loop and dip it in the soap solution. Once you dip it in the soap solution, you will see some soap film gets attached over here. Okay? Now, I enclosed represents the current that punches through that soap solution. You get that? So, I1 is I enclosed, I2 is also enclosed, but 
I3 is not enclosed. So in, in simple terms, you have to attach a flat surface to your loop. And then whatever, whatever current passes through that surface, we're gonna call that as I enclosed. You get that? That's one kind of surface you can attach, a flat surface. You can also attach another kind of surface. You can attach an open surface. So I'm gonna show you the same drawing from a different view. I'm gonna show you the front view. As in, if you imagine you are watching from here, then you would be able to see, say, one current flowing this way. This would be I1. Then you would be seeing two other current carrying wires, I2 and I3. Somewhat like this. And the loop looks like this now, you know. This loop will be covering um, this one, all right? So this green loop is the same green loop over here and we are traveling anti-clockwise as seen from top. Okay, so instead of attaching a flat surface, you could also attach an open surface. You can imagine some sort of, some sort of a plastic bag or you know what? You can imagine a f butterfly net, something like that. Let's, let's do it properly. All right, so this now is a surface that we are attaching and this is the opening, okay? So I hope you get this, right? This is like the opening of the plastic bag, whatever. Again, now once you attach this surface, the current that punches through, the current that enters the opening and then punches through, you know, this current is going to punch through. Similarly, even this current is going to punch through the one that enters the opening and then punches through, those will be our enclosed current. Notice, although I3 is punching through the bag, it's not entering the opening. You can think of it another way. You can think of this as I1 and I2 only punch through the bag once, but I3 punches two times, see? It punches here once and, and it punches here once and it punches here twice, and they cancel the effect. On the other hand, I1 and I2 only punch once, all right? and so their effect doesn't get canceled. So whatever you want to think about, I enclosed is basically current punching through an open surface. All right, so now in our example for loop one, what will be the answer for this integral? Well, for loop one, if you do the integral of B dot DL, Ampere says this has to be equal to mu zero times our I enclosed is I1 and I2. And now we have to deal with sign conventions. Which current should we call positive and which current should we call negative? Well, we are going to come back to the right hand thumb rule. See, we are traveling in the anti-clockwise direction. So you're going to use your right hand thumb rule and the four fingers are going to represent the direction of motion. And the thumb will represent the direction of the positive current. So according to our sign convention, I2 follows the thumb and therefore I2 is positive. So we would have plus I2 over here and minus I1 over here. And that would be Ampere's law applied to loop one. Let's choose another loop. Let's choose th this loop over here. Let's see what Ampere's law says for loop two. Well, we have to take one direction, right? So let's choose this time clockwise. So if you go for loop two, B dot DL is going to be mu naught. This time the current enclosed, well, we attach a flat surface again. You can attach a flat or an open surface. Most of the time we'll attach a flat surface because it's just easier. So dip it in the soap solution, a flat surface get attached and both I2 and I3 are going to punch through. But if you use your right hand rule, notice now, that the thumb would point inwards, okay? Just use your right hand rule. And therefore I2 and I3 are now negative because inwards becomes positive. So I will have minus I2 minus I3, you get that? All right, now the main thing to notice about Ampere's law is, if you look at the magnetic field at any point, so let's consider this magnetic field, this magnetic field over here, this point. That magnetic field is due to all the currents, isn't it? I mean, whether you choose a hypothetical loop or you don't choose, it doesn't matter. All the currents are responsible in creating that magnetic field. So this current is due to all 
so this this field is due to all the currents okay however you notice that the when you do the integral that integral is independent of the current outside the the enclosed surface so you see what you see over here is the magnetic field is due to all the currents but the summation of the magnetic field dot dl that turns out to be only dependent on the enclosed current this is very similar to gauss law of electricity where we saw that the electric field depends on all the charges but if you calculate the surface integral the closed surface integral then that flux would only depend on the charges enclosed and that was the essence of gauss law so ampere's law is somewhat similar to gauss law but not exactly it's not a magnetic flux we're talking about the circulation this is called as a circulation of the magnetic field all right so we're going to apply this more um, we're going to apply this to examples and we'll see this next time stay tuned